This is Avermedia doing what they do best, a weird niche capture card that directly provides a solution for a specific kind of workflow that most other companies might want to make but can't justify the investment for. The Extra Go is the ultimate dock for your Steam Deck, Nintendo Switch, or even your iPad that allows you to connect power, USB accessories like a controller, mouse, keyboard, or storage, and even audio, and use the device with a screen, stream that video feed to a computer, or record to a micro SD card within the dock itself. This is nearly everything I have been dying for from a dock for years now, but there's still some room for improvement. Capture-wise, my biggest question was whether or not the built-in capture quality could beat the internal recording capabilities of the Nintendo Switch and the new Steam Game Recorder Beta. The Switch recording is not a high bar, but the Steam recordings are all right at the cost of performance overhead, and neither are very convenient when it comes to getting footage off of the device, with longer Steam recordings requiring me to boot into desktop mode and manually export them from Steam there, then transfer up to my computer. Really tedious. By default, the Extra Go is set to record in H.264, but if you install the new Avermedia Streaming Center app and plug the dock into your PC with the third USB port, you can change the recording quality and change the codec from old H.264 to the higher efficiency H.265 codec. Nice. Out of the box, the default record settings absolutely stomp on the Switch's poor internal recording quality, and the H.265 codec gets even better beating the Switch recording, no question. Comparing Steam game recording to the Extra Go in a few different games, the Steam game recording holds up surprisingly well, compression-wise. It records to the wrong gamma level, so I have to normalize that and resolve, but even then the colors and overall image are a little washed out. But in terms of compression artifacts, broadly speaking, it performs quite well compared to the out-of-the-box settings for the Extra Go. I'm honestly impressed by Steam here, but that does come with the cost of added overhead and such. We can improve the quality beyond the out-of-the-box settings. In the new Avermedia software, you have three quality options for each codec. Normal, Good, and Optimal. H.264 good is the default, but most of the rest of the recordings you see here are set to H.265 optimal. The differences are honestly minimal though. It seems to be a quality target rather than a constant bitrate recording, which is good. It means they're trying to allocate bits to preserve image quality in the best way possible. I specifically wanted to do these comparisons because I loved the old Live Gamer portable devices Avermedia made a few years ago. They were incredibly convenient for captures at not PC setups, but the internal recording quality was pretty subpar. Same thing with some of the Cloner Alliance PC-free recording devices I've had for review and just never got around to. Broadly speaking, the quality here is great for what I want. Sure, it's a little soft, but most devices you're able to use with it output soft video anyway, so it's not really a concern. I think it looks great. Anyway, looking at the quality modes, in H.264, normal averages around 14.5 megabits per second, which results in around 106 megabytes per minute of footage. Good averages around 16.7 megabits per second for around 120 megabytes per minute and optimal around 32 megabits per second or 252 megabytes per minute of footage. With H.265, normal averages between 25 and 30 megabits per second or 236 uh, megabytes per minute. Good is around 35 megabits per second or 280 megabytes per minute and optimal at 40 to 50 megabits per second or around 300 megabytes per minute. For context of storage, I initially used a 64 gigabyte micro SD card and filled it halfway to 32 gigabytes with around three hours and 12 minutes of sample captures for this video. I'd recommend going high capacity here. I'm throwing a one terabyte micro SD card in my dock, at least I can, until I can clone my Steam Deck micro SD over to this, and then I'll downgrade to around 256 gigabytes for the dock or so. These bit rates aren't super high though, so you won't need to get a super fast micro SD card or anything like you do for cameras, just big ones. Two weird things stick out to me here. Just how little difference there is between the quality profiles. I question the point of even having them, but I would also just leave it on optimal to be safe. Also, H.265 produces bigger files in every quality mode, despite being a more efficient codec. One might expect the opposite. If I really zoom in and nitpick here, I definitely see some extra blocking in the H.264 files compared to the H.265 ones. So there is an improvement worth using but you'd also be okay with the H.264 if that's what you wanted. Thankfully, most video and social media sites these days have no issues with H.265 uploads, and most video editors will support it fine today too. Compatibility-wise, it worked perfectly fine with Zero Fuss capturing my Steam Deck, Nintendo Switch OLED, and my M2 iPad Pro. No worries there. The iPad just detected my 4K TV and outputs a pillar box clone of the display, which is generally what I want. It could do a full 4K view in extended desktop mode, but you can't really use that for much on the iPad. 
The device supports 4K 60Hz pass-through, but it only captures up to 1080p 60fps. This is fine, given most of the supported devices only really output at 1080p or lower. I think that was to be expected, but it is a bummer that native 4K 60 capture can't be done, given the 4K 60S Plus four years ago could do it for a similar PC-free capture option. Switch is obviously outputting 1080p only anyway, so that's fine. The iPad runs at a native 1920 by 1440, and the Steam Deck is obviously not gaming at 4K. I have it set up for 4K output, but 720p gaming with FSR and the other scaling tools on the Steam Deck to make it pretty this way, it's a nice experience overall. I obviously can't measure input latency too much since this doesn't take any direct HDMI input, only output, but I will say I feel zero input latency to the TV, but there is a ton in the software preview. The new Avermedia Streaming Center is basic and a little confusing since Rec Central was working fine from what I could tell. It's got basic scenes and a pop-out preview window and it lets you sync up recording both to the SD card and to your PC with the physical button like the old live gamer capture cards they did. Though the PC recorded bitrate is controlled by the option in the app rather than the quality profile on the card, so you can increase the bitrate a little bit. But the card can only send compressed H.264 or H.265 video to your PC, unlike normal capture cards that send uncompressed video. So that means higher latency to your OBS or Avermedia Media Preview and lower end quality result for streaming because it's getting compressed multiple times. The preview in the app also gets super laggy once you start recording. Not a fan of the app overall, and I will just use it for changing the settings on the card itself, which I have little reason to do outside of this review anyway. I am disappointed that the while the capture card can work with Mac, the app itself does not exist for Mac, so you can't change over to H.265 if you're on a Mac only. You'll have to borrow someone's Windows computer or something. Physically, the dock could use a little work, and that keeps it from being completely perfect. It's the little things, like the SD card does not eject from the slot super smoothly. It gets stuck a lot or doesn't even try to come out at all. In theory, you could just use the switch to switch to the card reader mode on the back and transfer footage to your PC that way even faster, but eh. The dock itself struggles to hold my Steam Deck with a small grip shell on it, and the USB cord sometimes struggles to fit in perfectly sometimes because it's made to be like a specific length. Sometimes the main record button can be a tad unresponsive when stopping recording. You really have to hit it confidently and square in the middle for the best results. I feel like this is not something you can afford to mess up, like just make it a basic switch. It doesn't need to be this fancy spacebar replacement. I also had some pretty inconsistent uh, display detection. Sometimes when waking up my switch or my Steam Deck, it would detect the charge through the cable, but no USB devices nor the display. I'd need to replug the device itself or the whole dock's power in order for it to wake up. Avermedia seems to be working on this as they released a firmware update to help it on release day, but I'm still having some issues after that update, so hopefully they can keep tweaking it. Also, you do have to provide your own USB power supply. Uh, it aims for a 65 watt power delivery, so you'll need to connect your power adapter from your Switch, your Steam Deck, or your iPad, or use a third party one from Anchor or Ugreen or something like that with this. It does not come with power. I'd like to see some polish done on the mechanical side of the dock, but otherwise, this is by far my favorite dock for the Switch and Steam Deck for now. It's just so perfect. I'll be using an Anchor mounted display thing for the iPad, but for Switch and Steam Deck, Ooh, plop the device on there, plug it in, and I can game on the TV or monitor at my desk, capture easily, and with the Steam Deck, I can just plug in a keyboard and mouse way more easily than using it uh, with a normal dock and use it as a basic just desktop computer. This would be really powerful for, for a college dorm setup or some other minimalist way of computing. Steam Deck can be a really powerful personal computer. My previous favorite dock was the Stealth Dock from Genki. It's just a wall wart with USB-C, USB-A, and HDMI. And it was really convenient uh, for capture card testing for these devices, because I could just plug it in, don't have to set anything up. But the extra go definitely earns a permanent spot on my desk instead. Product links will be in the description below as always, and while you're there, go watch this recent capture card review to understand the process of what traditional desktop capture for these systems is like. Check out my new ambient music album, Desolate, and remember to be kind, rewind.